Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the presiding official, Ms. Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn R. DeFilippi, Acting Deputy Chief of Staff for Manpower Personnel and Services, Headquarters United States Air Force, welcome to today's change of command ceremony at which Major General Christopher E. Craig will relinquish command of the Air Force's Personnel Center to Major General Troy E. Dunn. I am Ms. Tony Whaley, your narrator for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the playing of the national anthem, and the invocation. Post the colors. Chaplain Feaser will now deliver the invocation. I invite you to prepare yourself in a manner according to your faith, and please join me as I pray. Holy One, we gather this day to bear witness to the time-honored tradition of the change of command as the mantle of leadership is passed from Major General Christopher Craig to Major General Troy Dunn. We give thanks for the work and the leadership of General Craig, his infectious energy and attitude, his love of the Air Force, and his absolute devotion to caring for airmen have challenged us to grow from good to great as we enable warfighters, airmen, and families. We ask for blessings on the Craig family as they turn the page to the next chapter of their lives. Be with them as they embark on new adventures together. And now we welcome our new command team, Major General Dunn and Miss Sonia Dunn. We are blessed to have them as a part of the AFPC family. As General Dunn takes on his new responsibilities as a commander of the Air Force's Personnel Center, we ask you to continue to use him and his family to make positive impacts across our talent management enterprise and build upon the firm foundation left by General Craig. 
as we anticipate the new lessons, challenges, and successes that General Dunn will inspire in our team, we ask you to grant him wisdom, insight, and strength, and grace for his family during the exciting times ahead as he continues to serve our country and our AFPC family as a faithful servant leader. I also ask for your continued blessings and protection on all who are serving in harm's way in defense of our cherished freedoms and for you to help us to grow and renew our dedication to give General Dunn the support he needs to deliver world-class talent management across our Air Force. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Fieser. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is our distinct pleasure to extend a warm welcome to the family members in attendance today. The spouse of the outgoing commander, Mrs. Penny Craig, the daughter of the outgoing commander, Miss Isabel Craig, and the spouse of the incoming commander, Mrs. Sonia Dunn. We also extend a special welcome. We also extend a special welcome to our distinguished guests, Lieutenant General Richard Tex Brown III, United States Air Force retired, Lieutenant General Darrell Jones, United States Air Force retired, the Commander, Air Force Recruiting Service, Major General Ed Thomas, and the Command Chief, Air Force Recruiting Service, Chief Master Sergeant Antonio Goldstrom, Major General Irv Lussell III, United States Air Force retired, Major General Peggy Poor, United States Air Force retired. Major General Patrick Doherty, United States Air Force retired. The Director of Operations and Communications, Headquarters, Air Education and Training Command, Brigadier General Brenda Cartier. The former Commander, 502nd Air Base Wing and Joint Base San Antonio, Brigadier General Caroline Miller. The Commander, 502nd Air Base Wing and Joint Base San Antonio, Brigadier General Russell Driggers and his wife, Mrs. Janet Driggers, and the Command Chief, 502nd Air Base Wing and Joint Base San Antonio, Texas, Chief Master Sergeant Casey Boomershine, the Director of Plans, Programs, and Requirements, Headquarters Air Education and Training Command, Brigadier General Eric Carney, and to all other senior leaders and our Air Force's Personnel Center family joining us either in person or virtually, Welcome. <laughs> I would like to draw your attention to the formation in the center. This total force formation represents the outstanding officer, enlisted, and civilian professionals that make up our diverse command. Leading this formation is the commander of troops, Colonel Brian Rendell, the deputy director of the Airmen and Family Care Directorate. Standing to my left is our flag bearer, Chief Master Sergeant Rebecca Baxter. It is my honor to present Ms. DeFilippi. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the change of command tradition as we honor the accomplishments of and say goodbye to Major General Chris Kramer Craig and his wife, Penny, and welcome our new commander, Major General Troy Dunn and his wife, Sonia. I see many leaders, generals and colonels and chiefs, families and family and friends from our A1 and local communities. Thank you and welcome. I also want to welcome to the 2,000 plus men and women of the Air Force Personnel Center. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of the A1 community, please join me in a special welcome this morning for our honorees' families. Kramer's wife, Penny, the girl next door who's been his partner for this and many other leadership roles, and their daughter, Isabel. Isabel, Isabel we're glad your finals wrapped up and time to participate in this important day. Although not her here today, I'd like to recognize Kramer and Penny's son, Evan, too. Commanding at any level is a team sport, and this is especially true for the unit, the size and magnitude of the Air Force Personnel Center. Penny, Evan, Isabel, and Chloe, thank you for your unwavering support to your husband and father and the entire AFPC team. 
your influence on this organization and the community as the first Vice President of the Military Civilian Club of San Antonio will truly be missed. Sonia, thank you for your continued support of the A1 family and welcome to your new AFPC family. Just as you, Elizabeth, Jonathan, Matthew and Hannah have supported Troy over the years, we have no doubt you will continue to hold a strong foundation for him as he steps into the new role leading the Air Force Personnel Center. It's an honor to be here in San Antonio this morning as we transfer command responsibility from one incredible leader to another. The responsibility and authority given to a commander is what distinguishes military service from all other professions. Commanders carry the special trust and confidence of their superiors, but more importantly, they must carry the trust and confidence of the airmen and guardians they are charged to lead and for whom they care. And although true in many jobs, when we say airmen and guardians at AFPC, we mean officer, enlisted, civilian, contractor, their families, and our forever family of veterans and retirees. When we add them all together, the commander of the Air Force Personnel Center is charged with supporting more than two million Ameri airmen and guardians. The Air Force's Personnel Center commander is also charged with ensuring all other commanders around the world have the right number of skilled airmen and guardians to conduct this mission in defense of the nation. With a lean staff in comparison to this responsibility, the center executes programs covering the entire life cycle of military and civilian personnel for the air space forces and our families from accession through retirement and beyond. This is a responsibility Kramer has held since August of 2020 and one he has executed with incredible dedication and success for the past two years. After a brief time away from the A1 family, he found his way back and has been a leader in talent management initiatives and care solutions and a champion for change, the right person for the job, overcoming numerous obstacles and challenges in, drastically changing, in a drastically changing world in which we found ourselves in 2020. It's a, been a pleasure to watch this alumni from what is now Justice High School, my neighborhood high school, in action. These past two years, AFPC has supported the Air Force and Space Force through multiple historic events and strategic changes. He assumed command six months into a global pandemic. From the beginning, Kramer displayed his eye for innovation as travel restrictions led to the establishment of virtual base visits through the utilization of technology, webcast, and cross-tier coordination. For example, he grew the squadron commander's course through virtual platforms to double participation, increase performance, and respond with agility to increase operational tempos. Then last summer, as the United States Armed Forces withdrew from Afghanistan after 20 years in the region, Kramer's steadfast resolve was critical to ensuring mission success for operations Allied Warrior and Allies Refuge. Under his decisive leadership, the center responded swiftly to build and source more than 2,300 requirements while validating the deployment data needed to operate around the world. His team facilitated the resettling of more than 67,000 refugees through their enormous efforts. Even with an eye on the operational stage, Kramer never lost sight of the change needed within our personnel systems. When the Pentagon would drop new ideas into his lap from time to time, he never hesitated. His stewardship of talent marketplace led to the overhaul of the assignment process, its first major relook in nearly 20 years, finally transitioning away from the assignment management system. All the while, he also worked to transform the exceptional family mo member program to centralized components and create a one-stop shop in support of our members and their families. As now retired Lieutenant General Kelly liked to say, you took a program from an F minus minus to a B plus program. Um, and improvements are on the way that make it, will make it even better. Kramer's also navigated complex law and policy updates to implement some of the most prominent changes to officer promotions in the last 50 years. He adhered to DOD-led level efforts to support racial and ethnic diversity reviews to ensure fair and equitable consideration across minority gender, racial, and ethnic groups, as well as the addition of adverse information to officer selections, just to name a few, while also simultaneously supporting the successful execution of Space Force's first officer promotion and enlisted evaluation boards. While the pandemic certainly changed how we all went about our daily lives, under Kramer's leadership, AFPC excelled within the new normal and leveraged innovation and technology whenever possible. Deploying additional digital airmen across the enterprise to expedite PCS orders authentication and initiating the new MyFSS platform alongside MyFitness, the Personnel Center has shown the Air Force is capable of agile development. Without his guidance, the Air Force could not have successfully recruited and retained 
young talent through the Premier College Intern Program, showcasing an 80% retention rate from this last year, with more than 500 mission-critical STEM students posturing the Air Force as an employer of choice for recent graduates. From prompt and accurate casualty reporting to executing the Air Force's disability evaluation system to leading medical recovery, family support, and wounded warrior programs, Kramer has been a compassionate and laser-focused leader ensuring the well-being of our airmen, guardians, and families. Kramer, it's been such an honor to serve with you and to watch you so passionately lead this AFPC team. The A1 is family is grateful for your unwavering dedication, your honest and frank advice, and your strong leadership over the past two years. I could not be more proud of the AFPC team and the ability to execute the mission under your charge. You are absolutely the right airman in the right place at the right time. The A1 family and I wish you, Penny and the kids, and Chloe, the absolute best as you transition into retirement in North Carolina to be near, be near family and become one of Troy's new customers. As we bid a fond farewell to one great leader, we usher in a new chapter in the Air Force Personnel Center's history by welcoming another outstanding leader, Major General Troy Dunn, his wife Sonia, and their children Elizabeth, Jonathan, Matthew, and Hannah. As most of you know, Troy is already in the A1 family and joins us from the half staff where he served as the Director of Military Force Management Policy. Troy, we're excited to have your continued leadership in the A1 family. And I have no doubt that you too are the right person at the right time to lead this dynamic mission and these extraordinary airmen and guardians. I know your quality and dedicated personality from working with you in half A1 and over the years, uh, but in particular in halfway on A1, your work on the topics like the 2020 racial disparity review and force management planning were remarkable. I also personally know your passion in caring for airmen and guardians and families and what it takes to lead a dynamic organization. For those not as familiar, let me tell you some of the other qualifications Troy brings to the table. A force op support officer through and through, he brings an immense amount of leadership experience, commanding at multiple levels, and I say this with a bit of jealousy, as the wing commander at our alma mater, the Air Force Academy. He has extensive joint air staff and congressional experience supporting and managing tough missions and dynamic engagements. Troy is the right airman to lead the Air Force Pers Personnel Center in this next chapter, and we anticipate there will be no shortage of unique challenges for him and his team. Troy, I know you'll lead the AFPC family through the challenges that are sure to come, and under your leadership, this team, this family, will continue to thrive as we bring personnel operations of the Air Force into the 21st century. Sonia, Elizabeth, Jonathan, Matthew, and Hannah, thank you again for your tremendous support. You set a positive example for Air Force families, and I wish you all the best as you once again take on the challenge of command. To the Air Force Personnel Center team, I know you will continue to perform at the same exceptional level for General Dunn as you have for General Craig and all past commanders. Thank you for the incredible work you do every day, taking care of over two million airmen, guardians, and their families. I am very proud of this team and your ability to provide talent management and care solutions regardless of the challenges. Put simply, global vigilance, global reach, and global power depend on the Air Force Personnel Center and it is truly my honor to serve along with you. Thanks again to all for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Philippi. Ladies and gentlemen, General Craig. Hey, thank you. All right, I'll move this up just a little bit. Um, hey, thank you, everybody. Good morning. Uh, really nice to see you. Tony, thank you. Keith Baxter, thank you. Chapel Feeser, appreciate the words. Uh, to the band, to the honor guard, nothing uh, but class. Thank you for doing that. It really makes the, the ceremony special. Never take it for granted. Uh, I thank you. Hey, uh, for those in the sun, I mean, I really appreciate you. Being, whether you were voluntold or volunteered to be out here, thank you. And it's those cheap seats in the back that you guys really have the, uh, the best, uh, best vision. Exactly. It's just like a concert. Thank you. <laughs> hey, welcome to all of our distinguished. I, I won't repeat that long list, but that's kind of the key there, the long list of distinguished visitors here, here representing Air Education, Air Education Training Command, JBSA, uh, alumni, family, and friends of the A1 and the AFPC family. So thank you all, not taking for granted that you're here today, uh, really to honor General Dunn as he, as he takes over here at AFPC. Now, normally I'm an ad hoc speaker, 
but I've done this long enough to know that when you're leaving an organization that you love and really have spent a lot of great time, uh, it's probably smart to write things down. So uh, that way I won't linger on for you all, especially those sitting in the sun. Um, I've written it down because my job here today really is to just briefly thank uh, everybody in a very broad term, but also uh, reflect as well. Thank you, Ms. D, uh, for officiating. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, to say that we're appreciative of you running the A1 Enterprise right now is an understatement. Your ability to dive in, uh, to investigate, to learn, to drive process change, uh, both for the A1 and the AFPC team is not taken for granted. Uh, and I just really appreciate uh, your time being here. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, to our incredible protocol and support staff team, this is the part where I say, hey, this doesn't happen overnight, getting this all set up, but it really did happen overnight. Uh, as you look around here, normally we've got a street going on. There's not normally stands there, uh, but it really is a special moment, and I appreciate you all getting the uh, chance to be here today, and that's in no small part to our protocol and staff team setting it up. Um, standing here in front of this building uh, brings back quite a few memories. Uh, walking in here as a young captain, as I've said many times before, going to check my records uh, and then tr having an appreciation for what AFPC does. And the first day walking in here back in 2020 uh, to take command, it's very fitting that we're doing our change of command here. Now up front, I'll tell you, family uh, is an integral part of this Air Force journey and command. I'm, for those who know, I'm getting ready to step out the door here to transition in a couple of days, some might say retire. Uh, and so I'm gonna hold off on some of the thanks to my family and friends uh, for that ceremony. Uh, but I will kind of state, and, and uh, Ms. D highlighted, uh, my son is currently in training with the Navy. Yeah, I said that right, Navy. I screwed that one up completely. Um, hopefully he'll make it out here for the weekend. Isabel, thank you for making the early journey, wrapping up your finals on Monday to get out here, finishing your second year in North Carolina in college. Very proud of you. Uh, and then to Penny. Uh, Penny, it's been a fun command, but Penny is definitely my co-commander uh, in this journey. In fact, when we got the news of this assignment a couple years ago, uh, it was one of the first, maybe if only, assignment where Penny actually jumped up and down and clapped. Uh, she was happy. She was happy we were in a joint assignment at the time, really happy to get back to the Air Force, back to family. Uh, and I tell folks, in many cases, all of us as leaders should have a little bit of strategist in us, and all of us should have a little bit of a personnelist in us. So the opportunity that we had to come back to hub of all things personnel uh, and lead was a great opportunity. Thank you, Penny, for that. And then hopefully this AFPC family knows how special it was for Penny and I. Again, thanks, Penny. Big deal. So now I'll just take a couple more minutes here uh, to highlight a few thoughts and uh, really give some thanks out there. Firstly, our formation out here, led by uh, Colonel Brian Rendell, and then also our, our shirt, Jared Singer. Uh, you all represent over 2,500 Air Force Personnel Center folks uh, across the board. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, at the end of the day, any accomplishments that have been highlighted, noted, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. You all know that that is solely done by you all day to day, overtly in major programs uh, or behind the scenes. Here at AFPC, our job is simply to execute Air Force personnel policy, right? We know it's not quite that simple, is it? Um, and there's an awful lot of science and analytics, but there's also that unknowable art that goes into it. Uh, you all do it so well in execution. As our executive director, Ms. Kim Tony, often says, personnel is personal. And you all have done a great job of that, so it's very true. Again, thank you, Brian Shirt, uh, and representing everybody there that's uh, crowded around today as well. Now, my time in command was certainly interesting, as every command is, uh, punctuated most importantly by the COVID environment. Candidly, truly, I'm just happy to see live human beings here today uh, and see some smiling faces out there. Uh, COVID was and is not uh, ideal. However, you've handled, you've adapted to it extremely well. We've always talked about safety, IT platforms, new ways of doing business and sustaining human connections in that last point. You maintained and you continue to maintain and foster those human connections. It's important, please keep it up. To our directors and our deputies, uh, you are my commanders. No better group of folks to execute the mission command as I sometimes gave vague or little guidance and yet you all ran the next necessary execution, the improvements, and importantly, the care for our team, uh, not just our Air Force personnel team, but the entire Department of Air Force. Well done, and hopefully you understand how much I appreciate you all. To our senior enlisted and our superintendents, some of you may have heard me say that I humbly think 90% of all AFPC challenges are solved through the chief and the senior NCO network. It's true, look up the stat. Um, importantly for this, I just recognize that it's never lost on me 
how you have my back. Literally, as I sit in staff meetings, a lot of the chiefs would sit behind me and huddle behind me, and I felt at least like you had my back, so thank you for that. Hey, a special note of appreciation to our civilian corps. Uh, I use that word core in maybe a non-standard way, but it hopefully shows my admiration and appreciation for our Air Force civilians writ large. Almost 200,000 Air Force members that are not just part of our Air Force, but who are driving and guiding our Air Force, and no more so than here at AFPC. Thank you for your expertise, your service, and your leadership. Uh, I'd be remiss if I did not highlight our front office and our special staff team, as I mentioned the COVID dynamic, made walking around not quite an option most of the times. Through it all, our front office team was here on most days, partnering, advising, brainstorming, leading across the campus. Hopefully you know how special a team and a family this assignment has been for Penny and me. Uh, we laughed a lot, and uh, we should keep doing that, and it's really important. Finally, an exclamation point for Chief Aaron McElroy, Chief Hoagland when I was here the first year, and then Miss Tony. I often say, if you're talking to me, you're talking to them. If you're talking to them, you're talking to me. There are no better folks to share the burden and the joy of command, uh, and I know they know how much they mean to me. And so I'll wrap it up. For those in the sun, you can start breathing easy. We're going to keep this thing moving. Um, as I get to set to pass the flag towards Major General Troy Dunn, uh, Troy is a good friend. He's a leader, already part of the A1 family. He's coming to us from the air staff with a wealth of personnel leadership experience. It's very good to see you taking command. Uh, all my best to you and to Sonia as you all take charge of a team that I know will take great care of you and as you lead our Air Force Personnel Center to really take great care of our airmen, our guardians, and our families writ large. So well done. Congrats. You'll be great. Again, thank you all for being here today and a humble thanks for just an incredible experience for me and my family. AFPC will truly always be near and dear. Thank you. General Craig will now receive a final salute from the command. This morning, as in centuries-old military tradition, Ms. DeFilippi would pass the command of the Air Force's Personnel Center from Major General Christopher E. Craig to Major General Troy E. Dunn. While brief, encompassing only eight spoken words, the change of command ceremony represents a clear and unequivocal passing of leadership, historically accomplished in front of the troops so all can witness the new leader assume his or her dutiful position. Ms. DeFilippi will now perform the change of command. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Publish the order. Department of the Air Force, Headquarters, United States Air Force, Washington, D.C. Under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 51-6, 604 and effective 18 May 2022, Major General Christopher E. Craig relinquishes command of Headquarters Air Force Personnel Center, Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, Texas. And effective 18 May 2022, Major General Troy E. Dunn assumes command of the Headquarters Air Force Personnel Center, Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, Texas.
Thank you, Mr. Philippi and General Craig. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my privilege to present the Commander, Air Forces Personnel Center, Major General Troy E. Dunn. Well, good morning. What a wonderful Air Force day. And since we have already extended the proper protocol, courtesy and respect to our distinguished visitors individually, allow me to extend my greetings to you all together as a group collectively and say thank you for your presence here today. To Ms. Filippi, ma'am, thank you for officiating today's ceremony and thank you for your vote of confidence in me and allowing me to join the outstanding professionals here at the Air Force's Personnel Center, I am deeply honored. To Major General Craig, to Kramer, thank you for your friendship, your partnership, and your leadership. I am humbled and honored to follow you in command. You have effectively led the Air Force's Personnel Center, and you have transformed it into a benchmark of a high-performing team. You and Penny, your legacy is outstanding, and you will be leaving a wonderful legacy here in our Air Force, and our Air Force owe you a debt of gratitude. So on behalf of me and Sonia, we extend our heartfelt appreciation, and we also wish you Godspeed. To Sonia, my beautiful bride and my best buddy, thank you for simply everything to include our four children, Elizabeth, Jonathan, Matthew, and Hannah, who are watching online. So from mom and dad, we send you our very best and we send you our love. And finally, to the outstanding professionals here at the Air Force Personnel Center, I'm talking about our amazing civilians who inspire me every day. To our fearless enlisted leaders, who are the hallmark of what it means to serve in a modern day profession of arms, to our outstanding officers who have been relentless during these global pandemic and have made sure that they have delivered unconventional and unconditional leadership during these uncontemporary times, and to our dedicated contractors who love this Air Force and love this country so much that you continue to serve alongside us. And I say thank you. Thank you for all that you do every day and for the selfless sacrifice and the compassionate care that you provide to airmen, guardians, and family. Thank you for your commitment to our seven operational imperatives so we can fulfill the promise of one team one fight. Thank you for accelerating change so your Air Force, our Air Force, can win against any strategic competitor, acute threat, or global challenge. We win because of you. We win because of the Air Force's personnel center. And so as we look forward and move toward to new opportunities that will shape the future course of our Air Force, I leave you with this one question. What type of organization, what type of team do we aspire to be here at AFPC? I look forward to listening to you, learning from you, and leading with you. And by doing so, together, we will answer that all-important question. Colonel Rendell, all standing orders remain in effect. Carry out the orders of the day. And to all others, God bless you all. God bless the Air Force Personnel Center. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, General Dunn.
Ladies and gentlemen, General Dunn will now receive a first salute from the command. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and remain standing until the official party and their families have departed. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us at the Park Club for a reception in honor of General and Mrs. Dunn. Thank you all for attending in person and virtually. Have a great and wonderful Air Force Day.